Hi guys and a warm welcome back to the Hull Yes podcast. Just had a wonderful chat with my friend Emily Woodcock from Step Into Hull, does some great photography, is a copywriter for Moose Proof Reading Works with Hull uh, Chip Spice, American Chip Spice, which is definitely from Hull, not from America. Um, and talked about her history, uh, like I said, studying in America, uh, traveling around a little bit, coming back to Hull, and just a love for the community uh, and the city itself. You know, the creative scene in the city, ways Hull can improve. Uh, just a really good sort of deep chat on, on Hull, its community. Uh, the city of culture, reflecting on city of culture, it was really interesting with Emily in this. So hopefully you enjoy it. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you for checking it out. Thank you for supporting. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone. This is another episode of Hull Yes, the Hull Yes podcast. I am here with Emily Woodcock. You have done lots of different things in your life, Emily. It's lovely to be here uh, be here with you today with your fantastic hair. Um, obviously, uh, we used to live next door to each other, and I discovered your photography, uh, Step Into Hull. Uh, you've, also, you've also recently started working for American Chip Spice, which is a Hull thing, not an American thing, for those that don't know. Uh, you're also an author. Uh, you've lived, you, you've studied in America, you've done so many things with your life. And that's why I wanted to have you here today, because I think you're a great example of, of, of some of the cooler people. I was going to say things, but that doesn't really work. Well, some of the cooler people in Hull. So, so, but that's me talking about you from my knowledge of you. So in your own words, who are you and what do you do? Who am I? Um, I am Emily Woodcock. I'm from Hull. I have several jobs. I mean, you say working for American Chip Spice, but I work for a full company called Swidia, which sort of manages the social media accounts for Chip Spice and another company called Spell With Me um, as a copywriter and marketing and everything like that, really. Um, and then I have my own proofreading, copywriting business on the side. And as you say, trying to get a book published as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Um, so so where does that well, you know, where does that sort of drive to do all those things come from? Because like I so say, you you've kind of you've got a background in American history, I believe. And so where where does where does that interest come from for you? Because obviously you've gone from American history and academia to to working in social media. I did think I was going to be an academic, and then I did my master's degree, and I hated it. <laughs> it was a research based degree. I've been used to having taught. You know, on your undergraduate degree, you have your classes and you have people around you. And then I did a research degree by myself for a year with like the odd class, the odd meeting with my personal supervisor, who was not the most sociable of people. I had a recurring nightmare about him setting my dissertation on fire. Um, he was <laughs> acknowledged in the department as being the harshest supervisor you could have. Um, and I remember sitting in graduation and uh, I had a Master of Research, I was next to the PhD candidates, and they were like, oh, you're going to do your PhD now? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so then I just sort of came out thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, and the university had a job board, and that's when I found an internship for a company called Transtuition, which are a non-profit based in Hull, which support refugees and asylum seekers. And the... Position. It wasn't for the job I ended up doing, it was actually in marketing. And then they sort of found out I had an undergraduate degree in English and a master's degree. And they're like, oh, maybe you could teach some English classes and do some fundraising stuff for us. So I just fell into this job of doing anything and everything. And somehow that gave me the skill set for my new job, which is marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. A really interesting transition. Um, and you obviously don't just do the, the academic stuff and, and the marketing. You're also a photographer and you do some lovely shots. Uh, you've got a few thousand followers on social media for your own passion. I, I'm going to call it a passion project. And I don't mean that to be disrespectful because obviously you do other things. But, uh, you know, what, what, what fuels your passion for photography? And I guess, you know, it's a wider conversation for later on in the interview. But what fuels your passion for taking uh, photos of Hull? Of all places. I started it in, I want to say it was the end of 2016 on the very start of 2017. So obviously City of Culture year. And there was so much stuff going on and I was volunteering for City of Culture. I was the pioneer volunteer. So we used to wear purple shirts, but they all now wear blue. I remember those, um, yeah. I much preferred the purple. It was very uh, snazzy. Um, and I just knew I was going to be going to all these events as a volunteer and I thought, I have such a great opportunity to take pictures. I need to share them. 
Um, so it was the second Instagram account I started. I now have many, as you know, because you've seen my first. Um, and it just sort of spiraled from there. I only thought I was going to do it for the year. And it just kept going, really. Mm. Mm, but yeah. photography my dad loved photography he bought me a cam well he handed me down a camera and bought me a new lens for it <laughs> yeah it's, uh, there's some beautiful work there and, and i think that's really you know it's really uh, sort of fascinating because again you've left hull and you've come back um to study and you, you went to america as part of your degree um and then you came back to hull i mean obviously you know it was it was an academic thing so i know you had to come back but but tell me you know what has oh, my visa expired yeah 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 you stu yeah student visa i had the same problem i was like please can i stay here yeah, um, like, no yeah they're like no uh but yeah uh <laughs> so what what has kept you in Hull? What what things have kept? We'll talk about your favorite restaurants, favorite places to eat in a second. But but what is it? What is at the core of your love for Hull, Emily? Well, my family's been here for generations, so in that sense, it's quite difficult to leave. I mean, my granddad grew up on Hazel Road, and knew Lillian Balocker and played for FC. And my mum's side were all from West Hull. My dad's have all been from East Hull, and it's just quite rooted in my personality. I think being mm. from Hull. Mm. Mm. What does that mean then? The the, the whole because I've heard that a couple of times. Hull is rooted in my personality. What what makes her? I think we're Hullanesians, aren't we? I think that's the the Hullensians. Term. Hullensians. Yeah. Okay. That's so why the yeah, rugby team's Hullensians. There yeah. you go. So Hull Hullensians. So uh, so so what makes a Hullensian and and, and what, really that that kind of attitude and that core um, that core being that core whole being. Yeah, I'm going to have to have a history aspect because if you're looking back on Hull, specifically post-World War II, we sort of got this reputation amongst ourselves as a forgotten city and this feeling that we're overlooked in terms of the national identity and sort of operating by ourselves. And part of that, I think, is, you know, we're at the end of a train line, you know, for the last stop. We're, you know, we're right on the edge of the North Sea. And it's always been the sense that we are the final destination. It's like you only <laughs> yeah. come to Hull if you are coming to Hull. You're never just passing through. Um, and, you know, we had a big downturn in the fishing industry in the 70s and 80s. And it just went through a period where there wasn't much economic input. There wasn't a ton going on, apart from ships, thanks. Um, and I think it sort of created this resilient personality of we have a whole identity because we're kind of used to feeling separated mm. and then the city of culture came and it's suddenly this huge opportunity to share all of these things that were never shared before yeah yeah absolutely and what do you i mean what do you think about that obviously it's a bit of a dangerous question a lot of people loved what city of culture did for us on a national and international level mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and some other people didn't but you know in your own words you know as someone that was taking photographs someone that was involved you know the front line of volunteering you know what do you think the city of culture did for hull uh, and it's i guess it's legacy on a wider level oh definitely i mean even in terms of legacy we're still on the weather map for the pvc yeah. <laughs> um it used to be this huge void along the northeast when there was no city. Um, but yeah, it just gave us such an opportunity to shout our names. And now when people hear Hull, they think, oh, city of culture. Whereas before they might go, oh, is that a town in Yorkshire or something? It's a city. Mm -hmm. um, and it gave big opportunities, I think, for a lot of independent businesses to come to the forefront. I mean, Humber Street really flourished during City of Culture, the work started beforehand, but you sort of started with small places like Thieving Harry's, which are thankfully still there. And now you've got this whole beautiful shopping place that's come up around it to support it. And I just don't think that would have happened without the City of Culture. And, you know, you had the Freedom Festival here and Hummusesh here, and it's just driven everything. Mm. Um, the volunteers, I do think sometimes it's a shame that the volunteer system is still in place because there's so many places in Hull that need volunteers and can't get them. Um, so I, oh, I always have a sweet feeling about that one because obviously I volunteered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I do know there are some jobs that used to be jobs and are now done by volunteers for City of Culture, which I think is a bit of a shame, especially when you're thinking about the arts industry, like Hull Truck, you know, you had them coming in as ushers. Well, that used to be like an entry level into theatre. And, you know, in the museums, 
again, you know, even just sitting in a room watching over the outback used to be an entry level position and now it's not. Mm, mm. Yeah, you mentioned obviously a little bit earlier on about about Hull kind of being the end of the line for a lot of people, and obviously City of Culture did sort of uh, expand our national identity. Now, obviously, uh, you and I both work in you know creative industries, but obviously also academia. Now, Hull Hull University is very known for its academic you know abilities uh, nationally, internationally, but in terms of the creative sector, you know, as an author. Um, do you find that being in Hull limits you in terms of opportunities, or does it does it not matter so much these days, post pandemic, in a you know in a very digital world that we're in? Good question. Um, in terms of being an author, I still think there is quite a division because so many publishing houses are based in London, um, and a lot of times I find it's a case of who you know in the industry. So I still think it's quite an elitist sector. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I don't think being from Hull gives me an advantage in that section. Um, but in terms of things like copywriting, yeah, the pandemic's opened everything up because I can work with people from all over the country, whereas before they'd look at my website and say, oh, she's based in Hull, never mind. Yeah. So, and also being in a place like C4DI, where I am now, um, I'm just surrounded by all these different creative people. It really gives you an opportunity to network which I didn't have before. I don't know what people who are in the industry long ago had it like. Mm, mm, yeah. And how has that been building that network again? You know, uh, th there is this sort of sense that, that Hull is, is up and coming, even though we, we, we even though we're, we're very old, you know, and, and we've been here a very long time. <laughs> what I mean to say is that, that there is this sense that Hull is now an up and coming city, post city of culture in terms of creative sectors, academia, everything. Uh, despite having, you know, stellar reputations, uh, you know, particularly in academia. You know, w what's the mood like when you're doing these networking things? Do people feel proud of being from Hull? Because there seems to be, certainly when when I left, and I, and, I, and I think we talked about this before, when you left, there wasn't necessarily that, 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 that pride for being for Hull. It was people either going, trying to leave, or people that were like, oh, people that had never been that wanted to, to sort of, uh, put a downer on it. So I wonder, you know, in conversations you've had when you've networked and, and just with, with in your general career, you know, what what's the mood like in Hull around, you know, kind of, yeah, get that that pride. Is it there? Is it coming? Or is it still, you know, something that, that, that we need to find, really, as a city? I think for people who live in the city, there's a sense of pride in terms of who we are. I mean, I know what you mean. When I was younger, you'd have people who say, oh, I'm from Beverly. <laughs> you were born in Hull. <laughs> yeah, but I'm from Beverly or Cottingham. It's the same. It's, it's and it's that same. sort of oh no, I'm not from I'm not from. It, it, it's the same. It always really bothers me when people say it's the same thing. I mean, I know it technically it isn't. Heard. Te technically it isn't uh but but i remember like yeah it, it, it's when you've lived in different parts of the world and how big everything is i'm like beverly and hull the same thing anyway that's i know that's a contentious well, you've thing just angered a lot of people, I, I know though. i know and that's fine if people are watching this and they, and they and they get angry that's fine you can get angry at me uh but make sure you like the video don't get angry at me yeah, don't get angry. Don't get angry at Emily, but make sure you uh, you spread the word of, of the whole Yes podcast. Um. Anyway, yeah. So so carry on. I apologise for interrupting. Uh, it's fine. A little personal um, rant. You know, I get it. I've been to Cottingham. <laughs> um. Yeah, and I also find in terms of externally, there did used to be a lot of stigma. Sometimes being from Hull, I remember going to Oxford. I went to summer school for a week. During my sixth form, it was sort of like an entry level program, so you could get a feel of what it was like. And I was the most northern person there. And the first thing anyone asked me to do when I said I was from Hull is say, There's a turd in the road. Because they wanted that flat. <laughs> turd in road, yeah. Yeah. And I refuse to do it in the Hull accent to this day because, you know, I'm not giving anyone the satisfaction. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and I have this, this strong memory of people going, oh, so are you family like in farming something? Because, you know, you're from up north. And <laughs> it's really bizarre. And I feel like the turning point for that wasn't necessarily city of culture. It was even whole city being in the top of the football league. I mean, when I was in America, you suddenly had people playing FIFA who knew who what Hull was because it was an option. You know, whereas before I'd go to America and they'd be like, What's that near? Is it near London? <laughs> Mm, it's an interesting. Yeah, I, I had the same thing. I had the same thing. It's an interesting point that was giving me my next question because because when I had um, 
I, I had a, a partner when I was studying in the US and I used to used to tell her about Yorkshire and the Yorkshire accent and get her to to do the Yorkshire accent. And and, and more recently when I was back there working, I was living in Dorchester, Massachusetts, and there is a there is a whole Massachusetts. Yes, so 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 of course so of course people were like are you from Hull I thought there was only Hull Massachusetts uh, and there is that kind of lack of knowledge we are near Manchester at best or near Liverpool at best when you have been out of the country how do you define Hull you know do you define it with pride or do you define it with define it with humor because uh, that's an interesting yeah, question yeah humor does tend to be the strong one I remember being in America and I had this lecturer in we're doing American Latin American relations, and he was one of those people. He had to have a personal story for every topic. He had to be able to insert himself into the story. And I said about being from home, he'd never heard of it. So I was sort of trying to name places around it, and the closest he had ever come was York. And he took that as an incentive to start talking about York. But I'm not from York. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's like you say, it's trying to find somewhere relatively close and then people start to identify you with that area. Mm. Think, but no, it's completely different. And I think for larger countries like America, they don't understand how much of a difference there is between relatively short distances. I mean, you can travel 10 miles and your accent sounds different, which Americans don't always understand. I find, um, you know, we say about having a Yorkshire accent, but... Yorkshire accent is really diverse. You have lots of different types. Um, the whole accent is a very distinct part of it. Mm. Um, I found out recently that we have the highest proportion of call centre staff in the UK because apparently our accent is easier to understand. Is it? <laughs> no, no one ever understands. No know. one ever understands me, especially Americans. They're like, what? <laughs> in America, I had to watch reruns of things like Sherlock and anything on the BBC to try and practice received English. Really? People didn't wow. understand me. Wow, there you go. And there were sometimes I had to learn how to say things in an American accent. So I remember like ordering a sandwich and I asked for tuna and he just stared at me. I ended up having to write it on my phone and show him the word. No way. <laughs> No way. Yeah, no, somewhat there was once a music video by a friend of mine and it said it was called I'm not from America, I'm from Hull. Um and, and he said that apparently people confuse the Hull accent for the American accent. I didn't get it personally. I've never seen it, but but it is out there. Yeah, it is out there. If you, if anybody wants to search, I'm not from America. I'm from Hull. By uh, I'll just Google just Google the uh, the title, um, and uh, it, it's it's quite interesting. Uh, I've mine, never had that comparison. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's it's an odd one, but uh, I, I didn't get it personally. Uh, but I appreciate the the, the sense. I mean, sometimes there. Americans don't even think I'm English. Mm, yeah, I've had Americans say, oh, "Are you German?" That one I had a cold. So another time I asked if they. And they asked if I was Australian. And I said, no, I'm English. And they said, you know, I thought English, but then I thought, what would an English person be doing here? Yeah, yeah, it's an odd one, isn't it? It's an odd one. It really, it really is. Um, yeah, I mean, from from your own perspective then now, um, before we talk about Hull and what we love about Hull, restaurants, bars, you know, everything like that, because that's what we are here to do. We're here to promote Hull. But I think it would be, you know, given your studies, given you know your history with Hull, it'd be interesting to ask you this question: Does does Hull need to do anything? You know, in terms of progression, development, or have we? You know, you mentioned we, we are very self sufficient. We we stand on our own. You know, it, it will you know Hull has already changed and developed with city of culture funding opportunities, etc. What does Hull need to do, if anything, to 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 embed itself more? deeper in the national consciousness is that something we even need to think about doing or are we fine as we are you know sounds like we're the underdog we're, we're perpetually the underdog you know well, forever. It, especially if you're looking in terms of deprivation i mean i worked in the non-profit sector so i mean when i was working there hull was the most third most deprived in terms of education skills and training um you know we have huge amounts of poverty in the city, we have one of the highest rates of people not having access to the internet in the UK. Um, wow. I remember when I, I had that. my City of Culture training, they said it was something like 40%. And that was, granted, that was back in 2015. That's, that's insane. Wow. But that was still an intense amount. And people obviously relied on going to the libraries to access it or public places. And those are now being regularly closed down. So 
on an economic level and a social level, yes, there is area for improvement. And again, I think that sometimes feeds into the narrative of whole feeling forgotten sometimes because we've had these issues for decades. And even with City of Culture, I mean, it brought improvements into the city and boosted our local economy somewhat, but it hasn't benefited everyone. Mm. Um, in terms of culture and sharing it, I think we've gotten quite used to sharing it within the city of Hull. I don't think we necessarily share it as widely as some other cities do. Um, I mean, if you think about music, sometimes you can immediately think, oh, Manchester, I associate it with all of these bands and Liverpool, or, you know, you think of certain galleries and everything, and or books, films. Obviously, we've had Hull races lately, which is amazing. Um, but a lot of things that have been filmed in Hull doesn't show as being in Hull. I mean, Enola Holmes, too, recently came out. It did a huge amount of filming in Hull. We did get a nice thank you at the end credits, but it's set of London. Um, so sometimes you think, oh, so many people are watching this, but they're not appreciating that these fantastic places where the filming is Hull. Yeah, it's an interesting point. I mean, without trying to get too too kind of because again, we we are trying to maintain this as a as a as showing Hull in a positive light, and I think that that is really important because there's not much out, but, but there there is more out there now that does that, uh, and you know, on, obviously on a small scale, that's what we're trying to do. But 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 I think you know, what would you like to see for the future of Hull, and how realistic? You know, I some of you, you know, I'm asking you to sort of challenge yourself here a little bit. How realistic are your goals for the for the future of Hull? And what would you like to see, you know, over the next? And I do hate the five to ten year plan in terms of when I'm interviewing musicians and artists, but I think it's relative here. I don't have a five year plan for myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what 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 do you think is a realistic, you know, aim and goal for the city of Hull uh, as someone that lives here, works here, and and is trying to uh, to you know uh, do cool creative stuff I think certainly in terms of where I work it feels like progress is being made but in terms of everything else I mean you only have to walk down Whitegate to see that virtually everything is closed um you know we still have a not great economy in Hull not great infrastructure everyone in Hull will bemoan the road works road works <laughs> you're not from Hull <laughs> You have one accident in Hull and the entire city stops. Yeah. It doesn't matter where it was in Hull. <laughs> or you get one pothole and someone tries to fill it in. And again, it causes massive backlogs of traffic. That is our infrastructure. Um, in terms of improvement, yes, we are getting more well known. Um, I always think there's room to improve that. On a political level, I'm not sure we're going to have much bear the luck unless a different government comes in because let's face it Hull is not at the top of anyone's agenda in terms of improving its local economy social schools I mean honestly when I worked at schools we had teachers who had any surplus budget were spending it on running washing machines to clean people's school clothes or giving people food to take home at the end of the day so maybe I'm just a pessimist but I still feel like a lot needs to improve in the next five years, but that, that shouldn't subtract from Hull being a great place. It's like we're a great place in spite of a lot of challenges, which sort yeah. of feeds into that whole pride. I like that, and that's a really good segue into my next sort of series of questions, uh, which is, which is, you know, what what do you obviously you've talked about what you love about Hull a little bit, but if you could tell me about. You know, because you get some great shots, for example, early in the morning, walking along the marina, things like that. You obviously do go out and eat food, places like Nibble, things, you know, which we, me and you have had many lunches there. You know, what do you love most about Hull in terms of the, the people, the places, anybody doing, you know, great things that you really admire in the city of Hull, whether that's with food, whether that's with, uh, you know, education, whatever. What This is your time to really plug uh, your favourite places in, in Hull and why you love them so much. Well, my favourite place is probably Humber Street, and you know why, because it's so close to where I live. <laughs> There's a million things to do and lots of places to eat and drink, which is great. But it's also one of those places that gives you a real feel for how Hull used to be, in a sense. I mean, we've put a lot of effort into revamping the city. But at the end of the day, we were always a maritime city, and there's something about being next to the water that always brings you back to that. Um you know, even just being at the marina or looking over at the old dry docks, 
Um, if you go on to the pier, there's a ramp which goes down the side, and that used to be a horse wash when people had carriages. So they'd go and put the horses down there and wash their feet in the Humber. Um, so, uh, yeah, in terms of area, this is, I absolutely love it here. I have a lot of fondness for Newland Park, uh, Princess Avenue area, because a lot of my education was over there. I mean, I went to primary school here, but then I was over at Newland and then at Wyke and then at the University of Hull. So I spent a lot of time in that part of the city. And I think it was sort of a nice precursor to Humber Street, really, when you think about Newland Avenue, because you had such an eclectic range of places and not many brands. Uh, it's a bit like... Um, Oh, I'm blanking on the name of the street. I'll forget it. Um, and you get to go, and you know that was like the first place I saw a Japanese restaurant. <laughs> Which I know sounds weird, but anyone who's my same age in Hull, when you grew up, it was like you went to Pizza Hut or McDonald's. There wasn't really that many options in the city centre anyway, routing. So that was always an experience going there. And the university has a, like, a lot of hidden treasures, which I feel like members of the public don't necessarily know are there and they can access. I mean, there's this fantastic art gallery in Hull uh, University's library. The ground floor is accessible to the public, so anyone can go, and it has an amazing mid-century art collection, which to some people might be like, oh, mid-century, but that's my favourite. So... <laughs> um... Organisations, I think Hull has a lot of really great social groups, which some people might not be aware of, um, that are set up around the city. So that might be supporting people who are from private households, uh, newcoming migrants and asylum seekers, children. There's some fantastic groups out there and they just don't get the credit they deserve, really. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's, there's there's places like Warren, Goodwin that I've, you know, that I've worked with that do amazing work with young people that I love very much. Um, you know, in terms of, say, if you were, say, if you were going back to America, say, if you went back to America, and I'm sure you did this when you were younger, but um, where would you, you know, if you were going to bring somebody from outside of the city into Hull? Uh, unfortunately, when I, when I bought people that I knew from college, uh, back to the city it was in my student days so i just took them to spiders um you know but but where would you take somebody if you were to bring someone from outside of the city you know outside of the country into hull to, to tell i have them. done that yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine visited um we'd stayed at the same dorm in america and he came over for i want to say about three days he came over on the train um our train station is sometimes not the nicest of places to enter um, so I mainly kept him around the marina area and where I live. We did a lot of things like going to the Deep, Baron's Art Gallery. I think we went to Hull Truck to see something or other. Um, and then just going to all the restaurants. And he was really impressed by the food options in particular. Um, I also had a nice moment of comeback because the waitress did not understand his accent. Oh, and nice. I've been used to being in America, people not understanding me. <laughs> Yeah. It's like a, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a lovely, a lovely moment there. Yeah. yeah he a, loves a the deep. But in fairness, most people do. The deep. Yeah. I love the deep. Man, I, I respect the deep. I respect that it's there. I think there's some 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 maintenance that needs to be done it, but it's a beautiful place, you know. It's a charity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great place to it's a great place to bring people from from outside. I, I've bought every all of my American friends have taken to the deep, yeah. Yeah. I mean, my upbringing was like at the same time as the deep because I was there when they did the first dig. <laughs> and my school had like two trips there before it officially opened. Yeah. So I remember I once went for an interview there. Um, they were trying to tell me about the history of the place. And I was like, yeah, I know. I know it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, quick fire questions then. Uh, yeah. Put you under pressure uh, as, we, yeah. as, we, as, we, as we wind down the interview. Favourite restaurant? It used to be a place called Operetta, which was on Bond Street, and it was the most beautiful Italian restaurant ever, and then it closed. And now I feel like I still have this void in my life. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. You ever just have lost your favourite restaurant? Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I guess I'll go for Lion and Key for okay. fish and chips. Okay, sounds good. Uh, favourite Bar or club? 
I feel like social at the moment. I've been there a couple of times recently. Social's good. I like I do like social. Uh, we've already, I mean, we've covered the deep. But favorite place uh, that that showcases Hull's history? Uh, the Hull and East Riding Museum, okay. which incidentally has some of the best preserved Roman mosaics in the country. Okay, your favorite, <laughs> uh, your favorite obscure Hull fact. You realise that I have a trove of whole related knowledge and I'm now gonna to have to sit here for ten minutes thinking about the perfect part. You can come you can come back to that one if you like. There's a couple <laughs> more. Would you like me to would you like me to return to that one? Yes, return to that. Okay, cool. Favourite whole music, uh like band, artist, creative, uh music themed uh whole thing. Whole <laughs> themed thing. Um Oh, beautiful South. Beautiful South. Okay, cool. Mick Ronson. I don't know. <laughs> Mick Ronson. I mean, it's great. Yeah, Mick, Ro Mick Ronson. Have you seen the mural course. of Mick Ronson at the university? Yeah, uh, I've seen a bunch of them. There's there's a few, isn't there now? It was yeah. a really great one in Queen's Gardens and it got painted over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, favourite personal memory connected to Hull? Probably when we got announced the City of Culture because it felt like such a long shot, really. I couldn't really believe that it happened. Mm -hmm. Top three things, to, you know, obviously we've talked about it before. Uh, this is the last one before I'm going to bring you back, by the way, to that other question. Okay. Uh, but so so we've talked about a bunch of them, but, but three quick fire uh, favourite things to do in Hull. Go to the museums and art galleries because they're all free. Uh, go around the marina. You don't even have to do anything. Just walk around the boats and go past the Humber. It's fantastic. And probably being on the train going past the Humber Bridge. Oh, that's that is beautiful. Yeah, that is yeah. when you know that you're home. Absolutely. Oh no, I'll fit one. I'll fit one more in for you. Okay. Favorite thing about Chip Spice since you do the marketing <laughs> for Chip Spice. Um, I love how. Passionate people in Hull are about chip spice. I mean, they are so possessive of chip spice. Every time there's some sort of random post about, you know, what's your favourite chip topping and they give you all the different options. If chip spice isn't on there, you will get 100 comments from people in Hull going, where's the chip spice? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right, okay. So, uh, favourite Hull, was it, was it the fact? I've forgotten my own question now. Favourite well, Think about it for a second while I think <laughs> an answer. <laughs> have you have you lost one? All right, okay. I'll re I'll I'll, I'll re I'll rephrase it. Um, okay. If you were to advertise Hull to anyone in a sentence, how would you? What would you? How what would you? What would you say? Would you be like, it's great because it's got chip spice. It's great because the Humber Bridge. What like if you had to advertise Hull in a sentence, like an elevator pitch, like thirty seconds to promote okay. Hull? What kind of things would you include? It's great because of the people. And the history. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, well, well, to finish up then, Emily. Obviously, you are you are notable for your photography and you know for your for your for your work. You've obviously written books. Uh, you're a creative human being, a lovely human being. Uh, you've been massively helpful to me and lots of other people over the time I've known you. Um, if you were to, what would you like to say to anybody that has? read one of your books, anybody you volunteered with, anybody uh, who uh, you have, uh, who's got behind you in the city of Hull, whether that's your family, whether that's friends, uh, you know, what would you like to say to those people that have got behind you through all of your endeavours and will continue to do so? Buy Chip Spice. Buy Chip Spice. It just loads of it, please. <laughs> buy loads of Chip Spice, okay. <laughs> yeah, so you know, don't just buy one, buy in bulk. Buy bulk chip spice. So, yeah. so what? What you really, saying? That, that does help me. <laughs> what you're saying? I know, I know, it does, and I, and I, <laughs> and I also, I also love chip spice. But you know, you're so you're saying to me, right? You've got your, you've got your really, you've got your really supportive family, the lovely people, by the way. You know, people, people, people do love you, and they love your work, and you want to be like, let's buy chip spice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, well. Oh no, wait. Maybe I should go support Squidio, my main employer. <laughs> okay. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, like, like normally people are like, yeah, I want to thank... See, the thing is, my... you say about me being really creative, the people I work with at Squidio are so much more creative than me. You should be interviewing one of them. 
uh, it's, it's it's funny because most people are like oh thanks to my family they're really supportive i really i really you know i'm really grateful you're like chip spice squidio people i work with okay i mean it's fine that's that i've given you the opportunity I mean, and... they support me i support them that's a fair trade i don't need to give them a shout out Fair enough. This is a, a, totally an opportunity to plug whatever you want, and I I appreciate that. Okay, is there anything you feel like I've missed uh, that you would like to promote? Anything you want to plug uh, during this since we're since we're finishing up? No. Okay. <laughs> well, that was easy. Uh, thank you guys so much for for, for checking this out. Uh, please do support Emily. I'm going to post some links to Emily's work, Instagrams, and stuff in the description to this video and the audio. Um, Emily. Thank you so much for making the time for me today. I really appreciate it. No problem.